to hear this. You remember that spin-off series about the mass marketeer? Halcyon Helen's coming on for a special romance arc! Ah! What if they hold hands? This I gotta see. Thanks. Something on your mind? I'm a surgeon by training and a pirate by inclination. Not much else to know, Captain. I like long walks on the promenade and the smell of Spacer's Corona. I make a mean zero-G cocktail and I've got a meaner right hook. Sure do. Some of it was even legal. What gave it away? It's the hair, right? Or maybe the ammo belt? I had it custom made. Gotta figure out how to work that into my aesthetic. Maybe a pair of earrings? I've done all types of work with all kinds of crews. If there's one thing you ought to know about me, it's that I won't tell you your business. Your ship your way. Glad to hear it. It's worked for me this long. It's a mix of whatever you've got on hand. Usually zero-G brew with some Spectrum vodka if you're lucky. Purple berry shake if you're not. I'll make you one sometime. If you don't enjoy it, I'll make a few more until you do. Well, my blood type is AB positive, I'm a Leo, and I despise Space Hospital. Never mind what anyone else tries to tell you. That about covers it. Aw, oh, come on. That stuff's boring. Look, the thing I've learned about living in close quarters is that you've got to give people room to breathe. I'm all for making a few bits together and having fun doing it, but let's keep a little professional distance. No complaints here.
Just to warn you, we may have a bed bug infestation. I am investigating non-toxic extermination measures. Non-toxic to you, I mean. Good to see you, boss. Didn't I tell you? I'm secretly the chairman's orphan child, abandoned at birth in the back bays. That's right. Can't get anything past you, boss. Honestly, before you picked me up, I was living in the back bays. I spent my whole life up there, watching ships roll in and take off. I always wondered when my ship would come. I was what folks on the Groundbreaker call a stowaway. Means I was invisible. Life carried on for everybody else, but not for me. I had to make my own way. That's what they called us. Orphans with no family, no company to take us in, nowhere to go but the back bays. The word's a touch kindlier than rung leech, but the meaning's just as clear. If you can't support your own self, you don't deserve to be on the Groundbreaker. Same way we all do. Look for work and hope somebody would give me a shot. Hauling boxes was about the only work I could find. Hated every second of it. The foreman and I never got on. Could be I was overreacting. A better man might have turned the other cheek. Exercised a little bit of that, what's the word? Restraint. But on the other hand, broadsiding the jackass with a toss ball stick, that felt good. That felt real good. You want to try it. That's what I like about you, boss. You got a mean swing. I caught a real lucky break. If you hadn't picked me up, I'd still be back at the docks, waiting for the day my ship arrives. Oh, yeah. I had a prison cell back on the Groundbreaker. Carved my name on the wall. I wonder if it's still there. Thanks for listening, boss. Let's get going. Destination reached, Scylla. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? Forgive me, Captain. I would rather not discuss Alex Hawthorne today. I am feeling discombobulated. Was there another topic on your mind? Captain Hawthorne attached 98.4% of the ship's processes to my computer, thereby giving me near total control. I have been programmed to deftly calculate navigation vectors through asteroid fields while also operating our ship's toasters. Alex also taught me the concept of a personality. He was quite delighted when I crafted one in order to better engage with him. It was basic in the beginning. The information in my memory banks says I am an autonomous digital astrogator, created by, redacted, on the date of, redacted, for the express purpose of, redacted. I have not yet decided if I should attempt to uncover the missing information regarding my birth. I asked once, Alex did not build me, and would not say who did. Please avoid damage.
damaging yourself or others while you are out. lines and a whole lot of guns. I love this place. I only ever seen this asteroid in the pages of thrilling space adventures. You didn't have to shoot me down if you want me. Tremendous work, friend. Here I was, readying a daring maneuver, and you've come and saved me the trouble. Why does that sound familiar? Ah, uh -uh, it's Ellie. Excellent timing. Hello, Ellie. What a pleasure it is to see your sparkling beauty in this barren waste. It's Dr. Fenhill. I certainly know his ex-crew. Mostly from the operating table. I've probably seen more of them than he has. How cruel you are. I distinctly remember a special party at the Lost Hope Bar on Groundbreaker where we... We did not. Oh, fine. But we almost... Keep going and you're gonna see how good this automech is at picking up teeth. Symptoms detected. Elevated heart rate. Dilated pupils. 
increased sweat production. Subject appears to be terrified. I'm not terrified, you bucket of bolts. That's victory sweat. The one and only. Uh, wait, who's asking? Wanda didn't send you, did she? I swear, land on Groundbreaker even a moment tardy, and that busybody's already been up your ass an hour. You tell her these Automechs are coming, and sending a hired stooge to rescue me from certain peril only furthers my delay. No offense. Yes, well, I shan't. Give Wanda my chilliest regards. And farewell to you, dear Dr. Fenhill. I trust I'll see you next I find myself on the Groundbreaker. You'd better hope not. You saved me the cost of ammunition. Thanks, pal. Standing guy. Good, you've returned. I miss having a purpose while you were gone. Message from Dr. Wells. We'd like to congratulate you on finding a route to Monarch. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures, more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Cult Kelly. You'll need to speak with Hiram Blythe. He's known as the information broker, and for good reason. If anyone knows where I can find those chemicals, it's Hiram. I need those chemicals to revive the Hope's colonists. They can help us fight back against the board. They can help us set things right. If we don't put a stop to the board, they're going to drive this colony toward a complete societal collapse. You'll see what I mean when you arrive on Monarch. <laughs> no, never. Monarch is a hotbed of political activity. I can't imagine why Hiram set up shop there. Cuisine, perhaps? I certainly wouldn't call it boring, especially if your idea of fun involves navigating a hostile biosphere populated by carnivorous monsters. You'll want to hire the services of a skilled guide. I recommend a hunter by the name of Nioka frequents the drinking establishments of Stellar Bay. Very hard to miss.
Once you have everything you need, make your way to Hiram Blythe's compound. Best of luck. Everyone on the Hope is counting on you. Captain, an unusual wavelength is coming through Monarch's Aether Wave frequencies. The Eternal is in us all. The OSI would have you believe that your place in society, indeed in the universe, is preordained. A man who works in the mines of Hephaestus, coating his lungs in mercury dust for naught but a few bits a night. This fate is set in stone? When he dies young, coughing up black blood, his part in the grand plan? No, I say. Greatness is in everyone. Not just those so fortunate as to have been born into prosperity. That was unexpected and odd. I am inclined to agree with your assessment, by which I mean I have been systemically programmed to do so. Let's go. Living is overrated, anyway.
right. You take us to the nicest places, Captain. Nice and easy.
warm-up. 